Sajjan Sri is from the first film to the last, anterior to post period. You are able to see here. Uh, unfortunately, the CD stand, you are having a miniature stand. I mean, the films are very small. They are not magnified. So, you are able to see smaller size of the picture. Okay. This is the nasal bones and you are able to see Free the classification of, of the left frontal sinus. Okay. Right frontal sinus is very small and rudimentary and not negligible. Okay. And soft tissue opacity of the left frontal sinus. When you come to this, you are able to see six frontal peaks. Yeah. And you are able to see the frontal process of the maxilla. Okay. The right frontal sinus so small it is still not opacified and the left frontal sinus and coming to here the frontal baking is becoming very thin mm -hmm. because of the polyposage there is a lot of demineralization and you are not able to see the bony septa very clearly because mm -hmm. of the uh, soft tissue windows also the septum is slightly bent to the left side and you are able to see more the soft tissue opacity on the left side including the ethmoid area and coming to this film the both maxillary sinus which you are seeing is squeeze it a little bit okay, okay. squeeze it and a little bit there is a good thank you septal spur seen going on to the right side okay and first the anterior ethmoidal yeah first area, pattern all multiple polyps involving <laughs> and soft tissue is there and the lamina papyracea is intact you are able to see here and yeah. the lamina papyracea is intact and polyps and middle turbulence is just thin line like and we are okay. not able to very clearly, but here you are able to see the uncinate process okay. going above and attaching to the lamina papyracea. And the same way this side. And coming to this, you are able to see the anterior ethmoidal opacity and deviation from right going the spur onto the right side. And a lot of disease and the maxillary sinus, I think, is wide open by the disease itself. Just like almost middle medial antrostomy has been done and the polyps are uh, coming from the uh, maxillary sinus and ethmoidal polyps wide opening. All this One more petty, please. The squeeze it a little bit. You are able to see now here the base of skull, very thin. And uh, here you are able to see the skull and all the maxillary sinuses, all the ethmoidal sinuses are opacified. Now here you are able to see the middle turbinate is becoming horizontal and the ground lamella and the posterior ethmoidal air cells are seen. They are also diseased, almost it's a pan sinusitis involving all the sinuses uh, in the nasal cavity. And all the sinuses here also seen, the posterior ethmoidal cells. Now, here, you, if you carefully observe, uh, one more petty. Squeeze it, please. Uh, focus. The, you can see the flat base of skull and the sphenoid sinuses on both sides are involved. And we are not very clear about the rest of the this thing. And maxillary sinus, see here, the inferior turbinate attaching to the medial wall of the maxilla is so low. And this way, you must be having a very wide sinus opening, opened by the disease itself. And it's almost, it looks like somebody has already done a middle medial antrostomy and it's widely open. I have removed the patties that were placed earlier by uh, in the induction room. And I have uh, placed patties now under endoscopic control um, in the middle meters and on both sides. So these um, uh, patties have been soaked in uh, the Mofet solution that Dr. Madhu uh, spoke to you about yesterday. So um, I looked at the scans myself and um, uh, basically this patient has bilateral um, uh, polypoid disease. And the interesting thing here is that the uh, frontal sinus on the left-hand side is very rudimentary, very small, almost absent, and on the left-hand side is opacified. Uh, there was considerable demineralization of the uh, uh, bone, and we could not make out the anatomy very much, but the critical areas such as the um, anterior ethmoidal artery, the uh, skull base, the lamina papyracea, there was no dehiscence in the lamina papyracea, the anterior ethmoidal artery is running in the skull base, the uh, skull base is Kiros type 1, and uh, there was no anodic cell. So with that information, I am now going to start with the surgery, and we will do the left side first, and that is usually the routine for me. I always start off on the left-hand side unless there is a reason for, good reason for me to start on the right-hand side. So now uh, um, I'm going to go through the checklist that I talked about yesterday, 
And um, so we're going to look at the monitor is uh, adequately plugged in. The uh, light source is on 25. The micro divider is working and is on uh, uh, oscillating mode. Uh, RPM is at 5,000. The uh, blood pressure is uh, uh, 8551. That's pretty good. Uh, the pulse rate is uh, 61. Uh, that's pretty good too. So we have a and what have we given for um, anesthesia here? So we have given propofol, fentamine, and isoprolin, and uh, bicronidin. Okay. So uh, you heard that, and um, and that has given us a reasonably good um, a hypertension with bradycardia, which is what I expect of a good anesthesiologist. Right here, these are some of my instruments. Uh, what you're looking at is the malleable uh, curette right here, and this is the um, straight suction. There's the giraffe. Can I have a little bit of? Uh, Moment here. Now this is a giraffe that you are looking at. Uh, these are my own instruments. This is Nagashimi, Nagashima forceps. Uh, this is a backbiter that I use. I have my one bowl prop that I like, and this is a canal knife. I also have uh, two diamond bursts, which we may be using for the cases later on. We have zero degree, 30 degree, uh, 45 degree, and 70 degree scopes available. Among other instruments, we have um, uh, a couple of Blakesley, straight Blakesley. And uh, uh, 45 Blakesley, unfortunately, Blakesley 90 is missing. Uh, we also have uh, uh, straight uh, true cutting and 45 true cutting. Uh, we have side biters, but unfortunately, no scissors is available. The only scissors we have is a septal scissors. This is not ideal for a middle middle entrostomy, and this is actually meant for skull based work. We have a freer, we have a J curate, but unfortunately, a 90 curate is missing. Um, can't do much about that, but I can use the malleable, um, uh, perhaps. And then we have a coon seeker uh, right here. And uh, this is a dental syringe that I use for um, uh, infiltration. And um, I'll talk about that later. Among the suctions, we have a um, uh, short curve suction. And unfortunately, the long curve suctions are missing. We should have a four millimeter long curve suction. Okay. Okay, and uh, we do have kerosene punches. So there are some instruments uh, not available, but if we can arrange that for them, that will be good. Okay, so get, a, get, get them, okay? All right, so I'm now going to remove the patties that I placed um, inside. Minimal communication in the operating room, please. Okay, and you see that beautiful decongestion. I must congratulate the anesthesiologist and, of course, Dr. Madhu and, uh, for, uh, for, this, uh, uh, for preparing the nasal, uh, nasal cavity. Now, this is in a real uh, time oper uh, operating room environment. Huh? This is not a dissection hall. All right, so we have the agar nasi right here. And yes, from sir. the CT scan, we know that the agar nasi is not very well pneumatized. This bulge that you see here is the... The moderator has to answer me. What is this? The nasolacrimal duct. You yes, the that's the nasolacrimal duct. And this is the, the attachment of the uncinate process onto the nasolacrimal duct. And what is this right here? That's the polyp. That is the free border of the uncinate yes, process. Sir. Yes, sir. So here we have a polyp that is arising from. I like to see where the polyps are rising from. And it's very interesting. Look at that. You can tell the origin of this polyp is from the... Uncinate process. From the uncinate yeah. process. See that? And <coughs> most polyps tend to arise either from the uncinate process or from the ethmoidal vula or from the and so we have identified the origin of the polyp right here. And then we look for the rest of the anatomy. This is the basal lamella, basal uh, yes. lamella, basal lamella. And back here, although we don't see very well. Yet it the will bulla. be the ethmoidal bulla. So this polyp is actually arising both from the uncinate process and then from the ethmoidal bulla as well. See that? Yes, sir. Okay, so with that information, I'm now going to start with the infiltration. So I use this dental, uh, dental syringe that you can yes, see sir. here. Yes, sir. And pre prepared um, uh, extra cartridges. This is uh, one in 80,000 epinephrine. Uh, yes, uh, sir. Let me see if we can see that manufacturing date. And it's about 1.8 mil solution right here. And it contains lignocaine and NS. 
It's contained lidocaine, lidocaine uh, 22%. Can you see that? And yes, one in 80,000 epinephrine. So these are pre-prepared and come with a very fine needle. So we don't do the preparation ourselves. And I'm going to infiltrate the nasal cavity anteriorly uh, with this uh, uh, solution. So a little bit over the agar nasi. Enough to get a blanching. Then over the uncinate process. And in sometimes injecting inside the polyp, polyp also helps. Okay, and that should be enough. So I'm going to start with the surgery. Polyp. Madhu, you're blocking me, please. Some more. So I'm going to remove the polyp with the micro debrider. Mm -hmm. It is doing sculpture work. You know, you, with, I remove the polyp yes, and sir. go down to the bony landmarks. Okay. So here's the polyp, so that I can identify the landmarks. rest of the structure. Now that is the free water of the uncinate process. Behind here is the ethmoidal bulla, and in this subject, we have a very large retrobullar recess. Yes, sir. See that? Okay. So after every step, maybe just take a, a minute or off and dry the surgical field before you do the next step. Okay? And that gives you, okay, take that away. Reverse cutting, please. This is my reverse cutting. And you see that I'm putting the instrument in first. first. Yes, sir. All right. And then followed by the endoscope. And when I reach the area where I want to remove the uncinate process, I open it and curve it laterally and engage it in the uncinate process. Right? Yes, yes sir. Okay. So we make one cut and two cuts. Cuts. Now what do I do next? Ball probe. Ball probe. Use the ball probe. And... We put the ball Stosh. probe inside, uh, inside the, the ethmoidal infundibulum, infundibulum yes, sir. and gently open the ethmoidal infundibulum. Okay? Yes, sir. Okay. Give me a 90 Blakesley. I thought you said you have one. Okay, great. Uh, Madhu has brought a 90 Blakesley. That's great. Wonderful. All right. So that's wonderful. But this is uh, not stored, yeah, Madhu? Not, not stored. Okay. But anyway, beggars can't be choosers. Huh? <laughs> okay, so we are removing the upper part of the uncinate process. So what are the structures that you will see once you remove the uncinate process? Come on, moderator. Ball probe to me. Lamina papyrus, yes. Sir. Okay, do you see it? Yes, sir. There, this is a lamina papyrus. See that? Yes, sir. Okay, and inside the here is the maxillary sinus. sinus. All right, so now we're going to remove the lower part of the uncinate process. Okay, and in fact, there is not much disease in the maxillary sinus. Give me my canal knife. So I'm going to do a submucosal dissection. Some, when I demonstrated that on the, uh, demo, uh, on the cadaver, somebody asked me whether it's possible to do it in a live surgical situation. Well, why not? What, so I'm going to do that. Just remove the bone of the uncinate process. And there you go. Yes, sir. Okay. So we have opened up the maxillary sinus, sinus, sinus and preserved the mucosa at the same time. Okay. Yes. And sir. you can actually uh, trim that a little bit, smoothen that with the micro debrider, and we'll take a look at it with the 70-degree endoscope now. What is this structure right here? That's a bulla. Bulla et modalis. Yes, sir. Okay, so now we are looking at laterally. There you go. Beautiful maxillary oh, sinus. Yes, sir. And all nice mucosa around it. It would be criminal to do a middle middle entrostomy here, isn't okay. it? Okay, yes, Right, sir. especially when there is very little disease in the maxillary sinus. And the dimensions of this um, a, a, is 
about 7 millimeters, seven and that's what you need for good ventilation. ventilation yes. So I'm not going to touch this, and we will leave it like that. And now I will look up with the 70 degree endoscope, and what do I see up there? The recesses. What is this? Uh, the frontal. Uh, this is the agar nasi. Okay. Mm. Okay, the give agar. me a long curve suction, please. So, so far I'm doing lamellar one surgery, right? Y yes, sir. So now I go on to a curved suction. <coughs> and what I'm looking at is the agar nasi right here. Mm. The bulla is still intact. This is the bulla. That's the agar nasi. So where is the frontal? Come so on, it's there, right? It's it should be medial yeah. to it, yeah, isn't medial, it? Yeah, it's yeah de uh, depending on the CT scan, according to CT it's scan. So give me a JQ right now, please. And that should actually take us into the frontal, frontal recess. recess. Yeah. Okay, sometimes it's not that straightforward. But, and I think in this case, the frontal recess is, and yeah. is not that straightforward, well, okay? It doesn't matter. Mm. We'll look at it. Give me a micro debrider. See, when I was looking for it, I did not force myself in. Yes, sir. You gently look for it, and if you are there, there will be a path of least resistance and you'll be right in. Okay, JQ red, please. All right, I think I got it. There you go. Yes, sir. Right up. See that? There was no resistance whatsoever. Oh, yes, sir. It goes right in. There we go. So we found it. We identified the frontal recess. Yes, sir. It didn't take me long. And if you look at the relationship with the agar nasi, yes. it is medial. medial to it. Now could change to a red 40, please. Red 40, please. Uh, red 40, please. And now we have completed lamellar 1 surgery. We have identified the lamina papricia, we have identified the agar nasi, we have identified the frontal, the, uh, frontal the and we have identified the maxillary sinus and the maxillary sinus. So I'm now going to use a red 40 to open the frontal sinus. And you saw there was a lot of edema in the outflow tract, and that was the reason that on this side the Frontal sinus was completely opacified. opacified. And yes. once we open this, we should be able to resolve the problem that this patient has. So I'm using Okay, suction, you can change to straight. All right, can you see the outflow uh, track yes, very sir. well now? Yes, sir. All right, at this stage we can use a mushroom. See, I'm trying to do as much of the dissection, keeping the bulla intact. Yes, sir. And the bulla will actually prevent, is preventing any Inadvertent injury, injury to the okay, there we are. Okay, mm. and as expected, there's a lot of edema in there. Yes, sir. Okay, next, I will irrigate it. Give me a, a 10 cc or a 20 cc syringe. There, all cases, please have irrigation ready. Okay, what do we have blocking? All right, anyway, we'll come back to it later. Are we ready? Okay, get a suction. Yes, Coming sir. out? Yes, sir. See a lot of edema, there's some pus came out, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay, mm. so now lamellar one surgery is it's complete. Done.
Yeah, always point upward. It must be. Okay, so now I open into the. This is a very important part. Okay, so I'm now removed the ethmoidal mm -hmm. bulla. And can you see the anterior ethmoidal artery there? Okay, 45, true cutting. Can I like? Straight leg speak, please. Okay, can you see the anterior ethmoidal artery? Uh, yes, sir. Okay, let me show it again. Ball probe to me, please. Okay, what we have done is while we were not communicating, yes, sir, is the bulla was the removed. Yes, sir. This is a lamina papricia. This was the ethmoidal bulla. And see that? Yes, that sir. is the anterior ethmoidal artery running in the uh, suprabullar space. Yeah. And this is the first fovea. First fovea. Yes, sir. And right in front of that is the frontal recess. Yes, so sir. I'll come back and clean this area later. This shelf of bone needs to be removed or you can even do it now. Okay, hold that. <coughs> so I will remove that shelf of bone. At the end of it, you must see that the frontal posterior table of the frontal sinus must be in continuum with the skull base. So usually I work on that last. Okay? So now we, are, we have also completed our lamellar 2 surgery, right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. Okay. At the end of lamellar 2 surgery, we had to identify the skull base, right? Yes, sir. We have done that. We have identified the anterior ethmoidal artery. Yes, sir. Now we are ready to go into lamellar 3, right? Yes, sir. Okay. So where do I perforate the base of lamella? It's now in this case, because I did not do a middle middle and trust me, you can't see the roof, roof. But here it is. Right here. Wall and the roof is right here. So if I draw a straight line here where it meets the middle turbinate right here, this is where I will perforate. And I'm going to, here I point my micro debrider laterally, you know, medially and inferiorly. Okay? And inferiorly and because I want to go inside the I want to identify the superior turbinate. And there it is. Can you see that? Okay? Yes, sir. There's the superior turbinate. So once you have the superior turbinate, very important landmark. In this case, there is no nodi cell, so we can remove the posterior ethmoids. Good morning. And I am keeping a view on the lamina papricia. All right? I must go laterally up to the lamina papricia, right? So there you are, lamina papricia right here, lamina papricia there, mm -hmm. superior turbinate here. All these are posterior ethmoidal cells. Excuse me, sir. Yes. Uh, sir, I have a question for you. You have a what for me? A question for you. Go ahead. <laughs> uh, 
The first phobia that you mentioned, sir. Uh -huh. uh, actually, we haven't come across that in many of our textbooks. Oh, uh, well, and you know, because I didn't write them. <laughs> so what is the significance of this first phobia? First phobia is actually just the impression of the ethmoids. All phobias are impression of the ethmoids on the skull base. And here, look at this. Although there is no anodi cell, but look at the optic nerve. It is lying in the, in the posterior ethmoidal cell. Uh, so there is, and I think an anodi cell was missed in this case because of the cuts were simply too thick, too thick. So there is an anodi cell here, and okay. it is, look at that, this beautiful demonstration of an anodi situation. Okay, and I'll tell you more about the first phobia later. When I come back to that, we'll concentrate on the sphenoid sinus here. So we have a very nice anodi situation. I know. Okay. And what I'm doing now is going as far back as the laterally as the lamina papricia, superiorly the skull base right here. Give me a straight leg sleep, please. All right, can you see the skull base very nicely now? Yes, sir. Okay, and what do you see on the skull base? Urmila, come on. <laughs> sir, this is Dr. Pallavi, sir. <laughs> oh, Pallavi, okay. Okay, give me a ball probe. So the moderator changed, huh? Just for the question, sir, for the phobia question. <laughs> okay, all right. So uh, what structure is this right here? Uh, see that's, this? Uh, yes, that's the posterior ethmoid artery, okay? All right, give me a 45 through cutting. Sir, could you please show us the posterior ethmoid artery once again, please? Okay, I will, but please concentrate. Yes, sir. Okay, now I'm opening the... So I'm opening the... all the cells. See, the location of the posterior ethmoidal artery is 4 millimeters to 7 millimeters anterior to the ball probe, anterior to the optic tubercle, almost always. So the optic tubercle is right here. See, the optic nerve is <coughs> right here. That's the optic nerve. <coughs> right here is the optic tubercle, and this is the posterior ethmoidal artery. See the run artery running through right here? <coughs> that's the posterior ethmoid artery. That's the posterior ethmoid artery. Hello? Oh. Yes. Okay, 45 uh, true cutting, please. <coughs> okay, so I'm now working on the skull base. And using a true cutting. Force to do so. Okay, <coughs> suction. So, is there any need to open the sphenoid sinus in this case? Well, I think there's not much disease, but I will open the sphenoid sinus <coughs> for demonstration. And what you can do is give me a straight scissors, please, Madhu. Okay, so what you can do is for uh, sometimes remove the inferior most part of the superior terminate, just a little bit, and see, that will take you directly inside the sphenoid sinus. There you go, see that? Look at the ostium. Now note the relationship of this ostium with the anodi cell. See that? It is inferior and medial. Right? Yes, sir. Suction is not working. Yes, right. Okay, so we'll widen that a little bit. And there is actually quite a bit of edema. And there you go. Beautiful view of the spinot sinus there.
Okay, so now we will communicate the anode cell with this phenol. And see that? Nice view. <coughs> that right opposite there, that is the, the cell atrashika, right here, okay? Okay, give me a 45 true cutting now. 45 <coughs> Straight true cutting now. No, there's another one, the torch one. Yeah, the smaller one. See that so far, very nice, very clean surgery, thanks to uh, Madhu and uh, our uh, anesthesiologist here. Hardly any bleeding, and they have made my life much easier. So I'm now going to show you the lateral recess and see whether we can see the median nerve and the uh, second branch of the trigeminal. Give me a 30 degree scope, please. Okay. Scope. And I'm going to introduce it inside the sphenoid sinus right here, and I'm looking laterally in the lateral recess. There is not much of a lateral recess. Hopefully I'll be able to show you in other cases. On the CT scan, I noticed that, but there is some mucus inside there. Here, clean that. Okay, suction is not working, my friend. You can see there is no lateral recess, but you can see the optic nerve. This is the area of the carotid artery, and that's the cellar. Okay, with that, we have completed the surgery on this side. And I'm now going to finally look at the frontal recess again. You can see the very nice view of the anterior ethmoidal artery, the frontal. And now I'm going to open the frontal a little more, do a complete dissection of the frontal. Now give me a true cutting up. Okay, and see that? I made yes, that sir. cut, clean that please, clean, clean, clean. And here, see that? Now you can see the posterior table of the frontal sinus in continuation, almost. Can you see that? Yes, sir. All right, and yes, that's sir. how it should be. Now you have the entire frontal recess very nicely opened up. All right, and there's no need to do any more. At the end of it, you can see the entire frontal recess area is very nicely mucosalized. Now we have completed the surgery. At this stage, you can Put a patty inside there, because I prefer a 70, um, but you can use a 45 or even a 30, except the visualization with 70 is, is uh, uh, much better. Looks very nice, and I think it's this side, maybe I will not even infiltrate, because we have put the, um, um, the patties for a long time, the blood pressure is very favorable, and uh, I, um, Usually I will, but I think it's okay. We'll carry on uh, without the uh, infiltration on this side. So I'm going to remove the, uh, uh, the polyp. I'm not going to rush through the steps because I have de uh, demonstrated it on the other side. I don't have to demonstrate in detail, but if there's anything interesting, I will talk about it, okay? So we have um, um, exposed the uncinate process, reverse cutting the nurses to prepare the next instrument. Okay, now get a ball probe ready. Okay, and here we make one cut, get a ball probe, and after that get a 90 Blakesley ready. See, a good assistant will have the next instrument ready without you asking for it. Get a, and after this get a canal knife ready. The next instrument for speed must be ready by the assistant. And you can see that, straight black sleep leak. Can you see the lamina papricia? Yes, sir. Okay, great. So I'm now going to remove the uncinate process. This is still the uncinate process right here. 
I said that it is actually was joining the uncinate process. So you can see the lamina, and this is the lower part of the uncinate process. So I'm going to do the same dissection that I showed you earlier, sub uh, I mean, some mucosal dissection. And see, Madhu has the next, because Madhu has been assisting me, I think, for almost 13 years. And he knows my every... And what do you use, sir? I use the uh, same thing. Uh, in fact, I introduced this here. I use chlorhexidine and saline. Oh. It's much better uh, than getting a commercial antifog, which, cost, uh, which is expensive. Mm. So I prefer to use this. In fact, it, it is this reason that uh, everybody in India started using Cevalon. Oh. I introduced it in 1997 at Ravi Ramalingam's workshop. Okay, see that? It came out very nicely, isn't it? Yes, sir. And now we will look with a 70 degree endoscope. See that? Beautiful, isn't it? Yes, but sir. But I can work on the unseen a little bit more. Okay? So reverse cutting, please. A bit of uncinate was left behind, so I'll work on that. But I will not touch the mucosa of the maxillary osteo. Okay, and look that it looks beautiful, doesn't it? So we can leave it alone like this. All right, and now we'll look at the uh, frontal recess. Yeah, there is in fact no frontal recess in this case. There is a very small frontal sinus, and you can actually just see it there. See that? Yes, sir. All right? yes, sir. So all I have to do here is just remove that um, agar nizi. I think this was an excellent case for demonstration, uh, and that is why I must congratulate uh, Bibu for you know selecting this. And it's a, it's a good case for residents and uh, even for beginners. But, but uh, don't get carried away. You know, it's once you start doing it, it's not really that easy. And what you're seeing today is, um, I think, about 20 years of hard labor that has gone into uh, reaching this. Um, okay, that's the front. And you can see it on very nicely on the uh, CT scan also. Later on, we can open it a bit more. Give me the mushroom. Okay, now it looks very nice, doesn't it? Yeah? Yes, sir. All right, good. So we have completed lamellar one surgery. Let's go back and look at the lamina papricia. Ball probe to me, please. One surgery, you are looking at the lamina, very important landmark. You're looking at the frontal, and you're looking at the maxillary sinus. Okay? All right, so now we are ready for lamellar two surgery. Uh, give me a ball probe. <coughs> Clean up the field, every, after every step, good habit to clean up the field. You can just do it with suction or you can put a patty in. So what's my next step? Okay, there is a little bit of a, a deep a polyp here. We will remove that. What am I looking at? That is the hydra seminalis superioris, right? Okay, so now I can put a ball probe in there. Give me a ball probe. All right. So my probe is in the retrobular recess, and I can gently fracture it. And when I fracture it, you're opening inside the suprabular recess. See recess. that up there? And you can see the skull base and the anterior ethmoral artery. Yes, sir. No magic, right? Yes, okay. sir. So now, since we have subluxated it, you can use a true cutting. Give me a 45 true cutting. And laterally, you do not want to go beyond the lamina papricia, right? Lateral boundary is lamina papricia, straight through cutting now. You know, Madhu, you can read my mind now, huh? I didn't even have to ask. 
this is scary because sometimes i'm not thinking very good things okay straight blakesley okay so we can smoothen up with the micro debrider there's a lamina okay here you don't want to go up there okay this is the insertion of the bulla onto the skull base, skull base. Hmm? that is the retro and you can see the anterior ethmoidal artery back there we saw on the ct scan that is running in a skull base all right okay yes, so sir. we are open into the very nice retrobular recess and we have now completed first period, please no lamellar 2 surgery uh, second right surgery. yes sir little bit of a bony chip here take that out and there you are that's the skull base for the first four we are right there okay so what's the next step now perforation of the, of the basal lamella, lamella right so we're going to do that and like i mentioned earlier what will you do to the micro debrider rotate it inferiorly and medially okay and i think there may be another cell here looks like it see that there is or there may not be or this is maybe just middle turbinate and i'm at the level of the roof of the maxillary sinus okay that's the superior turbinate all right okay so once you have the superior turbinate now remember we found a nodi on the other side right so there may be one on this side as well so be very careful hmm? All right, there's the skull base, and no anodi on this side. So there's no anodi on this side, and we will do the same thing, straight through cutting. Yeah, okay. Okay, so we just remove the inferior part. excellent instrument and it should take you straight inside the suction piece <coughs> and the reason i i normally don't do this very often because it's not necessary for me but i know that uh, some juniors are watching this will make life easier for you but with time when you get more experience you probably will not have to do that okay there's the sphenoid ostium right there Okay, the sphenoid os sphenoid not very well pneumatized on this side, huh? and it looks pretty normal. Okay. Yes, sir. Okay, now forty-five uh, through cutting, please. Yeah. Okay, maybe, maybe there is an odi. Now it looks like maybe so. Okay, suction. Okay, this is the posterior ethmoidal cell, so there is a small odi cell here as well. Okay, straight Blakesley. True cutting. I think um, it's, it's okay. No, it doesn't matter. No, no, no. Straight true cutting. True cutting. Okay, so we are almost done, and I'm going to. Excuse me, sir. Leave it to make. Hello. Uh, Hello.
Yes. Sir, can you show us both anterior and po posterior ethmoidal arteries? Didn't I do that just now? Uh, okay, I'll accede to the request, but please. Okay. <laughs> Ethmoidal artery? Hello? Yes, sir. Both anterior and posterior. Okay. I'll show you the anterior in this ball probe to me. The posterior in this side is running in the skull base. You don't always see it, okay? But we will see the anterior ethmoidal artery right here. Uh, let me go back to a 70 degree endoscope, please. Right, but I'll try to show it to you. Okay. So that's the frontal right here. And that's the anterior ethmoidal artery. See this? Okay. Can you see that now? I don't hear you. Yes, sir. Okay, good. So now I'm going to remove the ledge between the frontal and the first fovea. Okay. Debrated section. Okay. See that? Now you, we have opened the frontal completely. Mm -hmm. You can see the anterior table, you can see the anterior ethmoidal artery, and you can see the lateral uh, boundary, which is the lamina papricia, and you can see the medial boundary, which is the uh, middle turbinate, and you don't see any cells in, in between. And we see very nice mucosa. This is the goal of frontal recess surgery. What's going on? Ball, section, uh, Ball probe to me. Okay, anyway, we are almost done on yeah, this side. Okay. okay, there's the posterior ethmoidal artery, optic nerve. Optic nerve is here, see this? There's the optic nerve, this is the posterior ethmoidal artery, and there's the anterior ethmoidal artery, there's this frontal recess, okay?